Why do you want to install a boost gauge? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good reason. My first decision is where to locate the gauge. My car is a 2007 Audi A4 B7. There's some popular locations with this car. The first is the side or center vent. I ruled those out because they take away the ability to change the airflow direction leaving the vent. I like the air to go where I want it to go. The steering column is also popular, but the thought of the gauge obscuring the instrument panel annoyed me. The third popular location is the A pillar. In my opinion, this looks very aftermarket, just bolted on. I like my mods to look stock or at least professional. I eventually settled on a vent pod that I found at iDo 3D Prints. It doesn't obscure anything like the steering column location does, and it retains the proper airflow in a non-adjustable vent. Not a sponsor, but find a link to this pod in the description below. They offer the pod in two styles, one with a polished finish and one that's raw. I opted for the raw version, knowing that I would have to finish it myself. So after sanding it a bit, you can see the pod does have some grooves and gouges in it. I used some body filler to fill that in and then sprayed it down with some flat black paint to get a nice finish. When shopping for a boost gauge, there are three things you should be looking for. The first one is the range of the gauge. What range of pressures are you expecting to come out of your intake manifold? The next thing is the cosmetics, how it looks. And the last thing is the style, either a mechanical or electronic. And here's the difference between the two of those. With a mechanical gauge, your intake manifold is connected directly to the boost gauge with an air line. If your boost gauge has backlighting, there will also be some electrical connection to the gauge itself. With an electronic gauge, the intake manifold is connected to a transducer, and the transducer then sends an electrical signal to the gauge to display the pressure. The gauge will also need electrical to display that value and for any backlighting. The mechanical install is simpler and more straightforward, but the electronic gauge will give you more display options. At idle, my car creates minus 22 inches of mercury vacuum. And with my stage one tune, it makes a max of 15 PSI. So I want a gauge that goes between minus 30 inches and 30 PSI. My dash cluster has red dials on a black background with white numbers and a silver surround. I want the gauge cosmetics to be similar to stock. My last decision is mechanical or electronic. For ease of install, I'm getting a mechanical gauge. Electronic is fine, but not what I want for this project. I found a gauge at my local parts store, Princess Auto. Not a sponsor, but link below. It displays the exact range I want, and cosmetically, it closely matches the stock gauges, and it's mechanical. One way to connect to the manifold is by tapping in at the valve cover breather hose. There are kits like this one on Amazon for this kind of connection. However, they seem to be prone to eating the screws covering the spare ports even when Loctited, so I didn't want one. I found the back of my manifold has a port that is capped at the factory. I just need to make an adapter to connect to the three millimeter airline that came with my gauge. My first adapter attempt was ugly, so I scrapped it and tried again. The second attempt was less ugly and more compact. It's held together with JB Weld and single ear clips. I'm very fond of these single ear clamps. If you wanna buy one of these, and I recommend it if you own an Audi, then use my affiliate Amazon link in the description below. To remove the rubber cap, I used the single ear crimpers slash cutters and cut the old band. I then pushed the cap off using a flathead screwdriver. My new adapter slid on fairly easy, so then I just aligned it. And once I had it all aligned, I again used the single ear crimpers cutters to crimp the adapter into place. There are a few ways to get the airline through the firewall. One of them is the front left wheel well, but I use the driver foot well, and you can see there's a penetration. This is a better view, and you can see there's a red power cable going through it. Just to the left of that one is an unused hole. In the engine side, if I zoom in, you can see this is where the coat hanger comes through the penetration. I just tape the air hose onto the coat hanger and then pull it through the firewall. Then I ran the hose through the firewall by drilling a hole and putting a grommet in, and then I cut it to length and attached it to my adapter. 
The pinout shown here is for a 2007 A4B7 with xenon headlights and a switch that has an auto position. The only wiring for this gauge is the backlighting. My gauge came with three wires. There's a black, a white, and an orange. The black is ground, white is 12 volt switched. This is not 12 volts battery. This one only gets energized when you're in the accessory position. And then the orange is for headlights. When you turn your headlights on, this wire is energized and it causes the LED backlight to dim down slightly so that the gauge is not as bright at nighttime. Finding a switched power source and ground are easy. Fuse 31 is switched power and I used a fuse tap to access it. Ground is found at a conveniently located chassis screw. For a cleaner install, use the headlight wires. Ground is found on pin 10, the brown wire, and switched power is on pin 1, black with a blue stripe. The headlight signal is pin 2, yellow with a gray stripe. And finally, installing the gauge into the interior of the car. Use a trim remover tool to pop out the side defrost vent. Next, tug on the side vent while giving it a wiggle. When pulling the vent off, be aware that there are wires connecting to the vent dial backlighting and you don't want to tear those off. Make a hole in the top and bottom of the vent walls, just large enough for the wires and air line. I used a Dremel with a grinding tip as it was difficult to get a drill in the confined space. Run the electrical and air line through the hole in the new vent cover and press the cover into place. Then bring the wire and air line through the pod and cut the air line to an appropriate length. I cut mine a bit long, intending to pull it back into the dash as I install the gauge. Plug the wires and air line onto the back of the gauge. When inserting the gauge into the pod, be sure the air line is not getting pinched. I ended up pulling the gauge back and forth a couple times just to be able to make sure I could align the wire and the air line. Gauges come in slightly different outer diameters. I found mine was just a bit too small and it was loose in the pod. So I wrapped a piece of electrical tape around it to work as a shim and that gave it a nice snug fit. Once it's all in, twist the pod and the vent cover to align the gauge for easy visibility while driving. Last thing to do is peel off that protective plastic and test to see how the gauge works. The pros, the gauge works. It shows the boost pressure and it's immediately responsive to my throttle input. It was fairly easy to install as well. The most challenging part was finding the correct headlight wire, which required a few hours for me to pin out the headlight plug and build this spreadsheet. The cons. The smoked plastic cover is convex and super reflective to the point where during daytime driving, the reflections can interfere with reading the gauge. There is a slight rattle that comes from the gauge's diaphragm, but I really have to pay attention to hear it. Under normal driving, I don't notice it at all. Now, the last con is huge. The backlight sucks. It's way too bright and the LED color is a very blue tinted white. The really bad part is the headlight dimmer barely dims the light at all. It makes the gauge super annoying when driving at night. My solution is to insert a 200 ohm resistor in the power side and this dims it enough to make night driving acceptable, but now it's too dim for daylight driving. I have a couple of solutions to fix this problem, but I'm gonna cover them in another video. If you like this video and plan to watch more of my videos, then please subscribe. If you don't plan to watch any more, then please don't subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.